Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. As you can see, I'm out in the outdoors uh, in my home here in Goa. And um, this morning, I want to take uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 27 to 33. We are in Saturday of the eighth week in ordinary time. I've entitled today's teaching, um, Let Go and Let God. So first, let's read the text. Again, they came to Jerusalem as he was walking in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes and the elders came to him and said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question, answer me, and I will tell you by what authority. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? Answer me. They argued with each other. If we say from heaven, he will say, why then? Did you not believe him? But shall we say of human origin, they were afraid of the crowd, for they all regarded John truly to be a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Now, even though we have just stepped out of Easter, out of the Easter season with the Feast of the Pentecost, the gospel texts of the 8th and the ninth week, that is this week which is concluding and the following week, uh, the 8th and ninth week in ordinary time will take us back literally into the holy week and the events that took place in the temple of Jerusalem. So in chapter 11, Jesus has entered the temple and then he has cleansed it. By the end of Palm Sunday in chapter 11, he makes his way to Bethany. And the following day, he curses the fig tree. I did this in my teaching yesterday with you. So if you look up yesterday's teaching, you will find it. Jesus then cleanses the temple, calling those who run their business their robbers. That's what he calls them because he refers to it. He says in verse 17, you have made my father's, he doesn't say, he, the words are, but you have made it a den of robbers. The word father's house is uh, in the gospel of Luke. Now, while the chief priests and the scribes wanted to kill him, and we know that because in verse 18 we are told that they look for a reason to kill him, they had to restrain themselves because the same verse tells us, or rather, yeah, the same verse, verse 18 tells us that the whole crowd was spellbound by his teachings. So, it is the Tuesday of Holy Week and Jesus is back in the temple. Now, this time he's confronted not just by the chief priests and the scribes, but for good measure they have brought the elders as backup. This is clearly, therefore, a showdown because we know that they accost our Lord as he enters the temple. So there was no chit chat, there was no greeting, just two direct questions. By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Now, I have addressed this entire debate in a previous article. I suggest you read it. Those of you who get my daily blogs, I've given you the link. You just have to click on the link. For those of you who have not yet subscribed to my daily blogs, then you need to send me a message at the end of this uh, video. You will get a telephone number and that will help you uh, if you send me a message via WhatsApp. I will then put you on a broadcast list and each day you will get all the links even previous teachings. That's if you'd like it. But coming back to our text, you see the last prophetic voice, and I'm giving you a bit of a background now, the last prophetic voice before John the Baptist was about 400 years ago. In this time, in these 400 years, rose several religiously oriented groups who bandied their interpretations of the Jewish faith, which could well be described as more tradition, less God. Now, as religious groups, they began very well, as all groups begin. Hopefully, all groups begin with good intentions. But after some time, they stopped focusing on God. In, loss, in, in time, as they say, they lost the plot, if not the way entirely. Now, if you want to read more about this, you need to look up the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 21 to 48. Jesus takes on these traditions and these interpretations of the law, when six times, uh, which are called the six hypotheses of Matthew, six times he will say, you have heard, why? The oral tradition, the interpretation, you have heard it said, but I say to you. So what you've heard from the rabbis is not important. 
I say to you. In fact, he says, your righteousness in the Ma Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, he says, your righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And the people looked up to the scribes and the Pharisees as religious men. And now Jesus says, you've got to be better than them. So Jesus says six times, you have heard it say, but I say to you. Now that they can see the authority that they had, they see it slipping from their hands with Jesus confronting them all through his pastoral ministry. And even now, even more when he's confronting them on their own home ground, on their home turf in the temple of Jerusalem, the scribes and the Pharisees are rattled. So the Jewish religious authorities could now feel the sand shifting under their feet because scripture tells us, as I read to you in verse 18 of chapter 11, that the, they say, scripture says, the whole crowd was spellbound by his teachings. Now, I want to end this with a reflection. You see, jealousy and the lust for power are very dangerous in the hands of those who crave it. By itself, being in power is not a bad thing. When you crave it, that's a terrible thing. And jealousy, of course, on any given day is really a terrible thing. You know, a person who feels the loss of power will stop at nothing. Conveniently, in religious uh, uh, circles, even using God to justify why Jesus should be put to death. Remember, it was the chief priest who sanctioned the death of Jesus by simply saying, it is better that one man die for the nation. Caiaphas, who was the chief priest at that time, was not concerned about the nation. He was concerned about retaining his post as chief priest a post that had to have the approval of the Romans. And for this, he compromised every value, sanctioning even the death of the Messiah. And here is something which we need to watch out for. When religion and politics gets together and begins to connive, oh, you have really, uh, really a troublesome time in your, at your, in your hand. So it is important for us to learn in our lives to let go and let God. That's how I'm entitled today's teaching. Let go and let God. You know, I've commented several times on this matter, advocating vociferously for members of both the clergy and the laity to step down from posts when they know that they ought to step down. You know, clinging on to a seat of authority in the church makes us no different than the politicians we abhor. When you look at our late Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, he showed the way. You know, authority is not given to us to rule and to dominate. It is given to us to serve. So if you know you have done your time, step away. Do not cling to the illusion that the church or any of the ministries that you serve as members of the laity or of the clergy will collapse without you. The reality is that they may be collapsing because of you. And I hope that was not too hard a teaching. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again on Monday. Tomorrow we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. Um, I will continue to teach, uh, to teach you every day here from Goa as much as I can. Remember, as I said, uh, I will be traveling also quite a bit this year. So in case you, I'm unable to record, but I would like to send you one of the previous teachings based on the gospel. I can do that only if you send me a WhatsApp message, the number will come on the screen. Please save the number first, then send me a WhatsApp message asking me to add you to the daily broadcast. What you'll get is the links um, of the teachings of the day, links of previous teachings. And I might surprise you because I'm going back to writing all my recipes. So. I'll throw in a couple of good ones for you also. Bye for now. Thank you for supporting our home for children here in Nuve. Uh, many of you have been writing in. Uh, we'll give you details about the girls' home as we get them. I've explained uh, as much as I can right now. But for those of you who um, are celebrating your birthdays, your wedding anniversaries, a special occasion, do think of the children of our home. Bye for now. I'll see you on Monday.